crucial losses that have shaken up traditionally strong sectors. The tourism and hospitality industry is one that has found itself on the receiving end due to bans imposed on both local and international travel. As the Kenyans await President Uhuru Kenyatta's state address with bated breath, many are hopeful that lifting the lockdown will have a ripple effect on one of Kenya's economic pillars. Judge Maringa has more on the sunken state of affairs in the tourism sector. That the COVID-19 pandemic has turned beaches and hotels into ghost towns is not a secret. At the coastal city of Mombasa, the waves gently below to the shore march to an empty reception as compared to days before the pandemic where thousands of tourists thronged the beaches. The hotels have nearly turned into empty structures with no single local or international tourists in sight. In the meantime, however, attendants are making some touches to existing infrastructure, albeit in expectation that things will get better. However, for managers such as John Guaro, the optimism levels are lower as they scratch their heads on ways to stay afloat during the pandemic. Our expectations as we open, first of all, the hospitality industry, we are 100% sure that we are not going to expect any international clients at this moment. Probably it's going to pick up as we near November, December. But for the start, we are going to specifically target uh, the domestic tourism. So whatever that we're going to ask the government is just to make sure that they uh, take out uh, the lockdown of the counties, they open it, they open the counties, that is, they open Mombasa to the other counties. Hundreds of kilometers away in the rangelands, the situation is not any different. Wild animals roam the savanna, only that this time, the safari vehicles ferrying tourists are missing. The Lewa Wildlife Conservancy, for instance, has borne the brunt of the pandemic. Loss of tourism and event revenue, along with anticipated declines in charitable giving, may mean at least $2.6 million loss of revenue to Lewa this year. All the lodges and the camps are closed. I saw there is no single uh, hotel which is open on Lewa and Borana Conservancy. There will be some changes. Mm -hmm. uh, these changes can be what, what areas which are going to be affected is the areas of uh, mass tourism. You know, uh, that kind of areas of mass tourism, uh, that, that kind of environment is going to be affected. But the areas which we expect a lot of boost in terms of tourism and travel is in the areas of rangeland, in the areas of conservancies, in the areas of uh, ecotourism, where, you know, the people, the number of people traveling, the people handled in those kind of facilities are, are few. To cushion tourism, the Kenya Wildlife Service has put in place measures such as reducing the park entry fees to all Kenya Wildlife Service parks and reserves for all categories of tourists. There shall also be health and safety protocols to be followed moving forward. According to Tourism CS Najib Balala, more needs to be done if tourism should stay afloat. Until we build infrastructure and attract investment and investors to come and develop these facilities. So we are going to, in the next three months, we are going to develop a, a, a Marshall Plan very clear and working with the governors and signing MOUs. The most important thing for governors is that how do they benefit? And that will be the engagement we are going to engage with them. All eyes are now on President Uhuru Kenyatta ahead of his address. This even as experts warn that reviving the tourism, hospitality and hotel sectors will also depend on measures by other countries globally. George Maringa, KTN News. I want us to take